at Heavenly Hoof, so we provide equine assisted therapies for adults and children with disabilities. We see a wide range of disabilities from autism to Down syndrome to um, developmental delayed and so many other CP. We've seen people who couldn't walk, who were able to walk, people who haven't spoken and and they start to speak. So we've really seen some major, major changes in people's lives. My name is Katie Wall and I am the Horses and Heroes Program Manager. I have been at Heavenly Hoofs for 13 years and I have started um, with therapeutic riding and transitioned to veterans in the last year. Um, we have had a veteran program for four years here and we have a research program as well as the drill team and I head up both programs. I was a major, an officer in, in the Army, and I was in military intelligence. And I served at um, Fort Drum, New York, and three tours in Afghanistan. The drill team, Katie came up with the formation and what we were supposed to do. It's a pattern and then we'll actually perform that pattern with this drill team at Silver Spurs Rodeo. I've been riding horses for about two years. I think the most thing I enjoy is getting out and being with other veterans. Being on a horse, just riding and relaxing. When I'm with the horse, I'm just relaxed and I'm kind of in the moment. I'm not thinking about things that I have to do or don't have to do or things that are wrong. My time in the military, um, I would say with my deployment, it caused some physical limitations and emotional limitations with PTSD. So those would be the two big effects that I had to overcome coming out of the military. And this program really helped me because it helped me with physical because I found an activity that I could do, which was very exciting for me. And then with the PTSD, it helped me realize that I can be out in the, in, in the open area and nothing bad is gonna happen to me, that I can relax and, and let my guard down and that there are people that care about us um, and wanna help a veteran get better. The branch that I was in was in the United States Navy. I served from September 9th, 1985 to September 30th, 2005. I was a machinist made first class. I did 20 years in the Navy. After I retired, I kind of sort of lost direction. Um, my life kind of sort of got twisted upside down and um, I was in need of some serious help, therapeutic help, and I didn't necessarily know how to ask for it. In the beginning, I just wanted to get information. I didn't want no part of riding the horse. That was my intent. But it was actually because of another veteran that actually made me get on the horse. He was actually an amputee all the way up here to his pelvic bone, and he had a reason for not riding the horse. And I felt guilty because I really didn't have no legitimate reason not to ride a horse. So I finally did decide to do it. One thing I learned about riding horses is that they're non-judgmental. They understand when you're happy, when you're, ha um, and when you're sad, when you're angry, your body puts off certain type of energies. And they sense that. And they tend to work it out a little bit. Willie and I have been together actually from my very first day. He's been the very first horse that I've ridden. He's a big baby, but at the same time, he does have a sense of trust. Every time I, I hit, hey, Willie, hello, who calling me? Mm -hmm. 
Hey, Cliff. <laughs> my first 14 in the Marine Corps and I, I, then I crossed over to the Navy Seabees which are very much like the Marine Corps it's, except for it's a construction battalion. You go to work building bridges or bunkers for the Marines and uh, whatever it takes. We're, we're out there doing construction in the battlefield. I was hit by a mortar well, not the mortar itself, it blew up right within a few feet of me. Do you want to see something? Sure. Uh, okay, gross. This is, that's, that's the exit wound. Uh, and it came through here too, broke both the bones, did a lot of damage. A lot of, a lot of shrapnel went through me and in me. Um, and uh, I, I still, and recovering, and that was 2004. I'm an animal person, and I connect with their personality. Uh, I get along with just about any horse, but today they had me on Big B, and uh, he and I got along famously. You know, it was great. Came back with a lot of PTSD, and the connection with the horse um, is really, really good. Um, it helps me. Come to the barn. Do you like heavenly hooves? I like heavenly hooves. In first place, we have Juan. I started writing uh, about 10 years ago, if not more than that. Well, actually, it's in 2002. I started writing because um, uh, they recommended for me uh, as a Therapy. <laughs> I've seen changes like like uh, he has paid more uh, attention to me. He has um, his days, you know, like 
where he's a little rascal because of the wind or um, he he doesn't want to like like a day that he doesn't want to pay attention or just um, not rushing. I have like a bomb with him and I like him. He's a very good horse. My son Adam is a student here. He was very little when he started, about seven or eight years old. And he was afraid of heights, didn't really follow directions very well of other people, and the riding has helped him uh, gain that confidence, have a lot of different experiences. He's blossomed from that timid little boy who screamed the first time he was up on the back of a pony, much less, to, as you can see now, he's cantering and very confident with, uh, with everything on the horse. So physically, emotionally, even cognitively, there's been um, a huge, uh, huge gains for him. And you too. <laughs> Please trot your horses, please trot. I'm my best. And especially even the competitions that they do um, give him a real sense of accomplishment and thrill. He, he almost doesn't care what color ribbon it is, but he's so excited to get a ribbon or a medal. So it's nice to see. Horses are so special and effective in helping us have people regain hope and to be encouraged is because of the unique relationship that they have different than other animals. They have this ability to be constantly interpreting what's going on without even having any words. And that constant interpretation enables them to communicate better, enables us to have the horse sense something with a participant that a human may not sense. They're very congruent, they don't lie. You always know where the horse stands. And this authenticity builds a unique sense of trust. And when a veteran comes back and has PTSD and they're insecure, or they have a lot of trust issues, or when you're a child who can't speak and communicate the way that everybody can, and you see people give you a second look, there sometimes is a, is a trust challenge. And horses quickly overcome that because of how congruent they are. There's nothing that restores hope more than being understood. When someone understands you, then you begin to trust and engage and follow their lead. And so perhaps the horse becomes the leader or the participant becomes the leader, but either way, they form a team and they start to rebuild trust, they start to rebuild hope, and they have a sense of great purpose together. Horses are very good communicators, and all of us could um, benefit from learning from them, and the outside of a horse is good for the inside of a person. <laughs>